Welcome back to Pacific Mornings with Aggie here on 5.31 p.m. 11 minutes past 7 o'clock. Well, of course, the Green Party has says, uh, have said that the government needs to do more for those on the lowest incomes, of course, as inflation outpaces wage and benefit increases. Uh, Stats New Zealand released their household living cost price indexes uh, for March 2022 quarter, which, of course, shows that household living costs continue to rise and, again, are hurting those on the lowest incomes. So joining us on the show this morning to give more details Details on this matter is none other than Green Party MP at Te Anau Tui. On with that, I say kia orana and welcome to the show this morning. Kia orana, kia orana. Thank you for welcoming on on the show on this brisk uh, yes, Monday morning. Absolutely, it is definitely uh, winter is upon us, um, Te Anau, But it's good to always have you on the show. We appreciate it. Of course, we've you know we want to know the Green Party itself are wanting the government to do more for those on the lowest incomes, right, as inflation sort of increases. Can you maybe just elaborate a little bit on what it is you really want? Yeah, so, well, the inflation has increased um, more so uh, at this point in time at a higher rate than in the last 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so what we know is that high inflation is not experienced equally uh, and that for people in low incomes, that means struggling to pay rent and putting food on the table. So we do have an... Uh, have an inequality pros- uh, crisis. It, it was already there, but rising inflation kind of exacerbates that. Mm. So we have concerns around the high cost of living. Um, we have uh, th- there's a growing number of people that are living. Fifty percent of people in Auckland are, are renters, uh, and we know that there's a high percentage of Pacifica uh, people are renting a, 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 as well. Uh, we also have concerns around the around the costs of of kai. Um, as well, because as the inflation goes up, that means food prices will get more expensive as well. So, doing things to like breaking up the supermarket duopoly, uh, to we can get a, a bit more control around how much food costs as well is, is mm. also really really um, important. But then making sure that everybody are, are able to uh, have access to to livable incomes. Yeah. Um, so you know, supporting things like the living wage, making sure that wages match inflation. Because uh, that's really important. Because um, sometimes people get a, like a they'll get a wage increase, but it doesn't match inflation. So actually, they're getting uh, a net loss in terms of their in terms of their income. So making sure those things are really sorted uh, is really important for us. Yeah, I like that. Tia, now, you know, uh, uh, sometimes I have this conversation with a lot of people. You know, we live in such a what yeah. they say a well developed country. The mere fact that we even see these types of poverty levels, you know, the uh, inflation and whatnot. What are some sort of really realistic um, ways to combat our current reality in housing costs? Uh, I think we should broaden the tax base. Um, mm-hmm. That's the approach we think is, is most appropriate. Uh, the um, the ind- the, the minister David Parker he in a speech last week indicated that the wealthy aren't paying uh, the same amount of tax as the rest of us are right. so by making sure that the rich pay their share the wealthy pay their share of of, of tax will make sure that there's more to more to go around so that mm. that's that that's really important there was an inquiry from uh, the human rights commission which was um that said something that like a, a rental warrant of fitness would be is needed to ensure accountability for healthy home standards right. as well. That's really important because we know that the housing costs, um, you know, whether you're renting or mortgaging or whatever, that is usually your, that is usually your biggest cost. So making sure that there, in the case of renters, a warrant of fitness would be really important. Mm. So you're healthy homes. That means um, everything else flows on from that. So that's really important. Anything though along the lines maybe of just you know the mere fact that a lot of us are paying nearly 70, 80 percent of our pay towards our rent uh, have you guys yeah. ever thought about maybe a policy that sort of maybe you know goes against the fact that we shouldn't be paying that much in regards to rent yeah we've, we've called for rent freezes mm. uh rent freezes in the past as well that that's really important but uh and then also just kind of broader uh, mm. uh tax policies around uh so like in the last election we're still calling for that it's like for a capital gains tax we've got to actually rein that in mm. um if you looked at the way that the subsidy kind of panned out during the pandemic Money came into people's pockets and then quickly moved through into the into the landlords, uh, mm. into landlords and property owners uh, uh, over, over speculated property, uh, yeah. um, and so that that's a concern as well. It means that the money didn't actually stay in the community, it just mm. in, in one in one particular place. What we need is actually that money to kind of flow around a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're tuning in, we are catching up with the Green Party MP Te Anotu Ono. I must say, yes, you are on the ground level. You talk to our people. Um, so what are the stories that you are often hearing within our Pacific people, that their struggles, though, with living costs? 
Uh, the rising uh, rising price of food that mm. that's that's always con con concerning, and what we know, um, and I, I'm not sure how much our people know about this. There's a, a report came out from the Commerce um, the Commerce Commission because there were concerns that uh, the supermarkets are actually owned by just two companies, Woolworths right. and Foodstuffs, mm. and so that creates what we call a duopoly. Everybody might be familiar with the monopoly, but a duopoly yeah. is when you've got two of them doing pretty much the same thing. Mm. Um, and there was a report that came out, it said a couple of things, um, at, but it could have gone stronger. Uh, they, so they said that they, they could have a code of conduct and, and this kind of thing. But what we call for is actually, let, we need to break up, the, mm. break up the duopoly. We need to actually get a control over the rising price of food. Yeah. Um, because, you know, after after the rent, uh, the next one of the other bigger costs is, is food. So making sure that people have access to affordable healthy kai is is really important um and with rising uh, and with rising inflation we know that's going to flow flow through to food prices as well mm. so now moving forward of course you know look i know elections are coming up right but i know you have a message for the government but you know if there was any point an opportunity that the green party would be able to be in that place you know of uh, leading the government how would you differently maybe do something to change from what the current government are doing at the moment Oh, we would tax the rich. Mm. Um, we would make sure that the wealthy pay their fair share. Uh, we would um, push to 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 uh, to really have that focus on making sure that everybody has livable incomes. Yeah. So whether you're on a benefit or whether you're working as well, that you shouldn't have to work a full time job and still be broke at the end of the week. Mm. You need yes, to make no, sure yeah. that you've still yeah. got that still got some some money in, in the pocket as well if you pay your pay your rent and pay your mm. food. That that's really important. So livable incomes, making sure that that, that that's really important. Um, healthy homes, uh, that, that's also really important. Uh, what we found out over the last couple of weeks was uh, not only uh, people, the, the government didn't even actually have data on how many, how many people owned how many things, how many mm. properties and stuff like that, how many of the, how many of the properties that they had actually bet that were up to actual standards as well. So that's a concern as well. So even on the data side of things, uh, there's work that needs to be done as well. So we know actually what we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so definitely we'll be, we'll be putting a push in on, on, on that area. Nice. But, you know, again, pushing, uh, making sure that we have that broad tax base, making sure that the wealthy pay their fair share. Mm. Um, and we see that all around the world. You look around, around the world, the richer are getting, are getting richer. The billionaires, are, uh, as the rest of us were struggling, they were mm. getting richer. Mm. Um, and so there has to be something done and the government has the levers to actually make sure that that wealth doesn't trickle up, that it actually stays with people um, and that it's, it's distributed uh, uh, more equitably. Nice. Tiano, as always, we'd love to just hear just a key message uh, to our community of listeners this morning. You know, as the struggle is real, as you say, what would be something that you could just encourage our listeners this morning with? Well, I would say uh, warm Pacific greetings to everybody on, on this on this uh, crisp <laughs> winter, kind of feeling winter winter morning as well. Mm. And just remember that, that many of the solutions for everything that we're doing is community. Yeah. It's those community connections and making sure that we think of uh, our families, uh, we think of our communities as well. Have that collective perspective. Um, and that is the, the message I will leave with you this morning. Love it. As always, it's really great to have you join us this morning, Tiana. I appreciate your time and look forward to catching up next time. Thank you. Bye. No worries.